Hello friends! Today I have three colorful and festive Christmas card ideas for you. We'll be using the Micron 03 pen. Once you draw with this and let it dry, it is waterproof, so it is perfect for using with watercolors. We're going to start off with a string of Christmas lights. I am using a 4x6 sheet of paper here, cold press watercolor paper and an entire list of supplies can be found in the video description below. As you're drawing your Christmas lights, be sure to alter the angles that you have them pointing, and you will probably find it easiest to start with the tip of the light, draw a raindrop shape, and then connect it to your wire. That way you can be sure to get the connection right in the middle of that light, and it'll just be a much easier experience overall. And if you like, you can always sketch out your designs in pencil first, and then go over them with the pen if you want to make sure that you've got the placement and the angling just the way that you like it. On the sheet of paper, I'm working about two inches down from the very top. That gives you a bit of a border around the top and the sides, and leaves plenty of space for using it as a card, or a notepad, anything that you like. I'll show you a really cool technique here. This is so fun. So when you first put the color down, create a light wash. You'll do that by having more water than paint on your brush. And you want to go outside the lines of each bulb. This will basically create the glow of the Christmas light. And I'll show you how this works after we go through the four colors that we'll be using. We'll go into yellow next, so have a little bit more water on your brush so that this color is a bit thinner. And just go outside the lines first, and then you can go through the center of the bulb as well. After we do that, we will do blue. Pick up a bright blue for this because it will look more ethereal and glowy on the outside. Use a small brush for this, that will make it the easiest on you. I'm using a size zero round brush. It's a Princeton snap brush, so it gives you nice precision as you're working on the paper and allows you to get into these smaller spaces for your mini paintings. We'll finish off with some red. So again, you'll keep that pretty light for the first wash. And now we get to intensify it. So you'll go back into your colors and now pick up more pigment on your brush. We'll start off with the green. I'm doing an even mix of the blue green and the yellow green. And you want to keep this inside your lines. That way you've got a nice concentrated color at the center, and that light wash that we did first creates this really beautiful glowy effect. Your paper will probably have dried from the first wash by the time you come back through with these more concentrated colors. If you're using 100% cotton paper, like I'm using here, those paper fibers will absorb that color. And we're not using that much water here, so this is a nice painting that you can move through and it doesn't take a lot of drying time. For our next painting, we are going to draw five ornaments, and you can just do these freehand, or you can use a stencil if you want to. These will have more of an organic look, so I'm just freehanding these. And you want to vary the sizes, so one will be a little bit larger, and then you'll scatter a few medium and smaller sizes on either side of that large one. Then draw lines from each ornament to the top of your page. Starting with the ornaments first will allow you to position the lines at the center of each ornament and connect it to the top of the paper. That's a little bit easier than trying to draw the wires first and then the ornament. And then we'll do some embellishment. We're just going to add some little pine sprigs here to each one. 
So keep these roughly in proportion to each of the ornaments. The smaller ones will have shorter sprigs, and then we'll do some longer ones for this larger ornament at the center. To make these, you'll draw a line. You can do a curve in either direction or even more of a straight line. Just mix it up a little bit. And then on the end of the line, you want shorter lines coming out to the left and the right. At the center of the line, you want them to be a little bit longer and then have the lines taper a little bit as you work toward the ornament. This isn't a perfect science, so don't worry about getting it just right, but that'll give you some things to think about as you're creating these. And then I'm going to go back through, I did two sprigs on each ornament initially, but then decided to have three on every other ornament. So you'll see me go back through and add a couple of sprigs here. After you've done that, we are going to start adding some color to our ornaments. And you'll start off with just putting water on a couple of the ornaments that we will make purple. I'm starting with that one on the left. And then I'm adding some blue to this red mixture that I already have in one of my mixing wells. The blue and the red together will create this nice purple shade. And then I'm going to drop that in on the water that I already placed on this ornament. That will allow it to mix around and just do its watercolor thing here, doing that same thing on this ornament over on the right. And pick up a bit of that deep blue and just focus that along the left side curve of each of those ornaments. That will help give your ornament a little more dimension. So rinse your brush, pick up more water, and just place that water onto the ornament first. We'll do the second and fifth ornaments for this round. And we're going to use some red on these two. Your paper will have a little bit of a sheen on it from the water that you put onto it, and then you'll add the pigment on top of that. Leave a little bit of white to the top right. That will be where the light is hitting the ornaments. Rinse your brush and then put some water on that center ornament. And we'll use green for this one. I'm using a blue-based green We'll come in and start on the left side, and you can see that water start to grab that pigment and it starts spreading through the ornament. You can see it a little more easily with this one because that's the largest ornament. Now take some of that deeper blue-green and place that along the left side bottom for the shadow. We want that to be placed opposite of where we've got the highlight on the top right side. Now you'll mix up a little bit more green. This is a yellow based green. And we'll use this to paint over the little pine sprigs at the top of each ornament. Cover the entire sprig area. And we'll use the yellow green for this. We'll end up coming back in with a deeper blue green just to emphasize the parts of these that are closest to each ornament. That will give it a little bit more dimension. So first step will be to go over it with this yellow green. And you don't need to be precise with this. Since we're working quite small, you just want to basically paint over those pen marks that you made earlier. You'll still see them showing through because we're using a pretty light wash of paint. And then you'll mix up a little bit of that deeper blue green and just focus that closer to each ornament and then at the center of each of those pine sprigs to give it a little more visual interest. Now after this step, you can let the entire thing dry. You can either let it air dry or use a hair dryer. And then come back in with some deeper colors and we'll just further emphasize the shadows on each of those ornaments. Starting off with the blue green on that center ornament. And then wetting down my brush again to pick up some of that deep purple. We're working pretty tiny here on that left ornament. And then on this one over to the right. Rinse your brush off again and then pick up some of that deeper dark red and use that to finish off your two red ornaments. Focus that shadow on the bottom left of each of those. And then this one is complete and we are ready to go into our third painting of this trio. 
This will be a set of Christmas trees. So you want to start off with the longest dash at the center and then two smaller dashes to each side. Place a dot at the center above each of those dashes. That will be the top of your tree. And then you'll just connect that center dot down to that bottom line. Alternate the heights of your trees. You can see that I've got the tallest one and the widest one at the center here, and then a smaller tree to the left and a medium-sized tree over to the right. After you draw those, you will add a star atop each one. You can draw this out in pencil if you want to first, or if you don't want to mess with the star, what you can do is just leave the three trees as they are. They will have kind of a mixed color effect that we'll be doing in each one, so they will be able to stand on their own if you don't want to add this star detail. To fill those in, you will go to your golden yellow I'm using the cadmium yellow hue. This is one of my most used colors out of this set. I use it constantly. <laughs> and I'm just pulling straight out of the pan. It's nice and creamy. And just use your golden yellow to fill in each of those stars. And then rinse your brush off and use some clean water to come in and paint over the triangle on the left. And then we'll mix up some blue green and you're just going to drop that into the water that you placed on the paper and don't worry about covering up the entire triangle you want to leave a little bit of white space and then rinse your brush off and get some more water you can see that i've still got a little bit of the green here but that's okay because we are going in with more intense color and darker values if you take a 50-50 mix of blue and red, you'll get a really nice royal purple. And then just drop that in on the left side of this middle tree. You'll have a more concentrated mix along the left side and then just encourage it to spread out into the middle of the tree. And then you'll take some red to place on the right side. And you're going to let the water do a lot of the mixing. We will just coax it a little bit by overlapping those colors in the middle. And then you'll rinse your brush and do that same thing on the last tree. So you're laying down the water first, and then we're going to go back in with a lighter, brighter red. Just mix that up a little bit so it's nice and smooth, and place that on the right side of the tree. And then you'll rinse your brush and pick up some of your yellow. You can use that same golden tone that we used on the star. Place that into the tree, and once these dry, the colors will meld across the entire tree, and you will get a really beautiful effect. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me for this tutorial. My name is Sarah, and I hope to see you again very soon.